Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Sunday, April 10th, 8 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. A surprise stealth geomagnetic storm overnight from a coronal hole stream of all things. It speaks volumes to the state of our magnetosphere. Well, an aurora was seen as far south as Massachusetts. But the big story, cold, winter-like storm could bring one to two feet of snow to Oregon and southwest Washington Cascades. Keep calm. It's boom time. Now the snow is in. Cold, winter-like conditions will bring heavy snow to the Oregons and Washington Cascades and will likely lower snow levels for the coastal range as well. KATU has declared storm tracker weather alert as the cold weather could make for challenging driving conditions. Forecasters will issue a winter storm warning from Sunday afternoon into Tuesday night for areas above 4,000 feet of elevation. The Casca Cascades could see one to two feet of snow in the mountain passes through Monday and up to a half a foot in the Cascade foothills. And this is just the beginning. There's more snow on the models, so stay tuned. And drivers were surprised by the spring storm this morning, but I'm sure they'll get a wake-up call tomorrow when two feet are on the passes. Now, winter weather warnings called for snow and near whiteout conditions declared for East Idaho. There could be blizzard, blizzard warnings and watches in East Idaho. So heads up there. Winter watch issued for... Big time kind of spring storm in Utah as well. Everyone's picking up on the global warming goodness here in April. Shut up, Al. Get in your home. It may be spring, but at least one last dose of winter is projected to come to Utah this week. The National Weather Service Sunday issued a winter storm watch for the northern Utah mountains where a storm with the potential for delivering one to two feet of snow to start the work week. Hello. Snow is also going to drop down into the valleys there as a powerful storm and pl possible blizzard is predicted in North Dakota and Minnesota. Say it ain't soda. Now, there is an uncertain storm path, but it starts as snow in western North D uh, Dakota on Tuesday, rain changing the snow, heavy snow likely with high winds, low visibility, and bad enough for shutdowns. So we should be seeing some shutdowns this week. Now, also, we have a severe weather threat. This is a big week. The most far-reaching severe weather tornado threat so far for 2022, and the largest in three years, is forecast for the central U.S. So we're going to see some severe weather action. Here we can see some from Wednesday to Wednesday night. That's not what I'm, I'm looking at here. Let's go all the way back here. Late, late Monday into Monday night, this is the region for isolated tornadoes, large hail, flooding downpours, damaging wind gusts. We're talking almost all of Arkansas, a little bit of the eastern Texas and northern Louisiana. And then that's going to move east with severe thunderstorms Tuesday and Tuesday night through Kansas City Saint, to St. Louis and all the way down to Dallas and Houston. So the greatest risk is in the dark red and damaging thunderstorms are in the lighter red. With tornadoes, large hail, flash flooding, intense downpours, damaging wind gusts, and gusts up to 80 miles per hour. It doesn't get any better Wednesday through Wednesday night. Just moves east down the Mississippi line there. Nashville, New Orleans, all the way up to Chi-Town, St. Louis, and La Crosse. All could be seeing flooding downpours, hail, isolated tornadoes, damaging wind gusts up to 80 miles per hour. So it's going to be quite a spectacular work week. For many of us across the U.S., strong storm to impact the con U.S. through the upcoming week. A significant winter storm will bring heavy snow and strong winds to the Cascades through Monday. Then the northern intermontane west through the plains Monday into Thursday. Severe weather will begin impacting areas of the southern plains and the lower mid-Mississippi Valley tonight. Critical fire weather conditions possible in the central and southern high plains and southwest. So those wind warnings are here in the pink. Winter storm watches and warnings in the lighter pink and blue. Who knew? And it looks like we have a little frost or freeze warning here over in the Delmarva. So heads up there. Now let's take a look at the models and we'll run it through. Here is your Sunday into Monday. And there's some significant snow already 18, two feet of snow moving in by tomorrow night. Um, and a little bit started falling there in Minnesota. As this Storm starts to build and move east. We can see those heavy totals in North Dakota, those blizzard mornings on Wednesday taking effect. This is after most of the snow in Utah Falls, right there, showing 
14 to 18 inches by the time they're sitting with two feet in North Dakota. Through Wednesday and Thursday morning, it's going to continue through Thursday and push a little east into uh, Minnesota, just the northern tier, and then heavy snow in the plains here. So heads up, Canada. And then our next system could be affecting the east coast Monday and Tuesday there next week. So that's a little far out, but keep a, we're keeping a close eye on the North Dakota blizzard and the heavy snow in the northwest. Seismic update, no quakes of note which is good news. All is quiet on the Western Front, so a little bit of a jiggling in Madagascar. Some minor activity in Hawaii. We've got a bunch of activity here in the Eastern Caribbean. But nothing significant, which is good news. Now, Ash from Shivalush, or Russia, is still moving over portions of Alaska, and a huge blast, 32,000 feet that we reported on yesterday, is still up in the atmosphere. Worldwide Volcano News Update. And nothing really uh, happening here. Some residual. There's the 25,000 foot threshold for Shivalush, a residual volcanic ash from the eruption. There's the 32,000 foot eruption. Pavlov in Alaska Peninsula is still glowing. And with the continuing lava flow and the great Sitkin volcano in the Aleutians has a quite a large active growing lava field. So those are the updates from the volcanoes. Worldwide Volcano News. A little recap on the surprise stealth geomagnetic storm. The strong G3 geomagnetic storm was observed due to an enhanced solar wind stream. We knew it was coming. It's called the coronal hole stream. And every time a coronal hole passes... Earth, about three days later, the stream hits us with some elevated geomagnetic activity, but typically not up to KP7. So, visible aurora was reported in strange places, including Massachusetts, which we can see here some shots from those aurora lights at sunset yesterday. Pretty fantastic. Now, moving on, dark matter could be a cosmic relic from extra dimensions. Yes, it's true. It's complete science fiction now. Massive gravitons may have formed a trillionth of a second after the Big Bang. In abundances great enough to account for dark matter, which they've never found, to the cost of trillions of dollars. Now, even if these uh, fairy tale gravitons exist, <laughs> It doesn't matter because they've never found them. And they've been looking for this dark matter for decades and have wasted enough money to feed all the homeless and starving people on Earth. That's how much the money funders care about you. And more interesting news coming out. Thousands of new viruses discovered in the ocean. It's only getting worse. We knew there were thousands of viruses up in the atmosphere. But now more than 5,000 new RNA virus species were identified in the oceans around the world. According to a new study, the study researchers analyzed tens of thousands of water samples from around the globe hunting for these RNA viruses or viruses that use RNA as their genetic material. The novel coronavirus, for instance, is a type of RNA virus. Now, why would scientists be looking for these? Gain of function, perhaps? More activity in the Wuhan lab? Or did they lose the ones they already had in the Ukraine labs that got taken over? It's anyone's guess. But all of this work is illegal and dangerous and disgusting. And I said it. Now, one thing that isn't disgusting is the fact that the earth beneath us may be shifting and not static and not layered like a cake and completely mind-blowing. Take a look at the three deep picture they're showing there. Now, groundbreaking research into the hot structures deep in the earth suggests they could be much more fluid than once supposed. And a lot of these arms from deep in the mantle, deep towards the core, are associated with some of the largest volcanic eruptions ever on earth. And there's a really interesting video here on the dynamic earth model GLD 439, which takes us through all of geologic time.
Now, one of the cool things about this is you can actually see the crustal slip occurring on Earth. Uh, and these, this plate tectonic theory of slow motion has never been proven. And yet, when we do these or look at these uh, mock-ups which go through geologic time, you can see quite clearly how rapidly the crust is moving around. And it's moving around because of what these plumes coming from the deep mantle or the outer core that move up towards the crust. It has something to do with the geodynamo and the, and the deep reach recesses of the Earth. But just take a look at the crust again as we replay this. Wow, that is a fantastic graphic. Now, an Australian Research Council ARC Discovery Earlier Career Research Award fellow Dr. Flamet's research and teaching focuses on how the dynamics of the interior of the Earth drive sea level change, shape surface landscapes, and control the climate. Now, he has worked with the resource companies to predict the location of both oil and diamonds more accurate, accurately. And, well, the stuff that's coming out is highly detailed. What we were looking at uh, in the last few years about these LLSVs and these other deep penetrating structures that are in the earth, none of the papers are as specific as this one, or detailed or creepy. And can you imagine geologic textbooks showing students that this is what the inside of the earth looks like? They would have no idea what they're looking at and it would be completely incomprehensible, which is why they use the false model of the layers that they show and teach in geology to this day. So a lot going on with geophysics, deep earth imaging and modeling, and it's happening so rapidly. It's fascinating. So stay tuned for more updates. And we'll leave you a link to the abstract in the paper uh, that the article came from, Assembly of the Basal Mantle Structure Beneath Africa. And this paper just came out 10 days ago. So, all yours. Now we're going to finish up on a really interesting paper coming out this month as well. Actually, it was released on March 29th, so just at the end of last month. Exposure to magnetic fields changes the behavior patterns in honeybees. Now we're already talking about supply chain issues. And the fact that there's going to be food shortages. And the fact that, that no, no one can hire anyone to work to do anything anyway. But this paper misses on all marks except one. The fact that magnetic fields change the behavior and patterns of honeybees. But what it talks about is anthropogenic magnetic fields caused by humans. And it's all our fault. That it's humans' fault. Environmental pollution with anthropogenic electromagnetic fields are causing the bees to go crazy or could potentially, based on this paper. Now, my question is, are they unaware of the changing magnetosphere, and the fact that we're entering a magnetic excursion and have been for 100 years, and that the field has waned 20% in just the last century? Do they know that? Do they, do they know that the Earth's magnetic field is the biggest magnetic field on Earth? I doubt it. But what that bodes is not well uh, for future pollination of crops, especially if our honeybees are confused and the amount of environmental toxins and pollutants continue to rise. We're all doomed one way or the other. Magnetic excursion, grid down, food supply issues, toxins, pandemic. I hope you're prepping. 
That's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. We're not here to scare you. We're here to prepare you. Stick with the winners. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. And be safe. We love you. Comment below. Become a Patreon. Support our work. We love you. Be safe. That's a boom. Mm-hmm.